number one, Lama Tsongkhapa's head doesn't tilt to the side in the normal form. He has five main emanations. One, this is Lama Tsongkhapa. Two, three, four. And the last one there in the form of Mahasita, that's all Lama Tsongkhapa. He has five main forms. All right, five main, not, not restricted. So each of the forms are different and they manifest differently for different purposes and needs. A deity who has the head tilted on the lower tantras, a deity that the head is tilted on the lower tantras, denotes compassion, maternal love, care, and um, extreme compassion. So what you're doing is it's reminding you of the goal. It's reminding you that when we reach that goal, we still have to be very compassionate and kind. So a deity that's slightly tilted like that, like Tara, slightly tilted, it represents the state that have, they have achieved, which is great compassion, which is equivalent to maternal love much, much more. All right, that's one. On, um, on Guru Rimchi, in Guru Rimchi's holy case, when his head is tilted, it represents tantric achievements, where he uses his tantric elements and tantric achievements to, to subdue. Because Guru Rimchi was very well known in Tibet when he first came to subdue many, many unnatural, supernatural, unhappy, and very um, negative forces. So when he was doing that, he wasn't just sitting like that. He had to move this way. He had, to move. he had different rituals and different ways to do it, and different mudras, different actions, different body movements. So him doing that represents activity from compassion. All right? In Lama Tsongkhapa's case, he's usually pictured as straight. Straight meaning mental stabilization. Straight means by great meditation, because when we meditate, we don't do it like that. Seeing straight, meditatively represents his chief full enlightenment in practice. But his different five emanations, example this one, he appeared, this one he appeared on an elephant. When he appeared on an elephant to one of his disciples, Kiburuji, why? He was showing great affection, great love for his student. Because Lama Tsongkhapa is a Buddha, he appears in visions to people very easily. He's very sensitive. And many Lama Tsongkhapa statues in Tibet manifest hills or speak or um, 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 either very heavy to move or very light. It has unusual ways of manifesting its power. And um, there's very famous Jeremji statues, which you can read in the Heart Jewel, very, very famous Lama Tsongkhapa statues of different sizes that have man manifested many, many extraordinary signs up to this day, up to this very day. Lama Tsongkhapa is a very easy deity to practice, very, um, com very, very easy to tap into, very easy to hold on to, very easy to achieve because of his nature and who he is and the combination of deities. And his mantra and the meditations are not um, difficult, but they're very, very effective. So Lama Tsongkhapa, in this form, we call these forms the Jesi Banga, the five visions of Jeremji, Jie Tsongkhapa. In this form, when he appeared on the elephant, the elephant represents overcoming ignorance, stubbornness, narrow-mindedness, and Lama Tsongkhapa has overcome that. On a pristine white elephant, because the elephant is not an actual animal, it's an emanation of his mind to, to show you his quality. And riding on a white, pristine, clear elephant represents his luminous nature that he has achieved, Buddhahood. And him being tilted, tilted shows you great love and compassion. I care for you. I'm appearing to you out of love. You invoked me. I appear to you out of great love, great compassion. And his, in this form, his feet is down instead of a meditation pose, telling you that although he's fully achieved, he's not stiff and hard he's able to come to you immediately to help. So this form is very, very significant with a head tilted. In the case of tantric deities, the head being tilted represents the type of tantras they are veered toward. Vajraganis is toward, tilted toward the left. Hiruka is tilted to the left. Kalachak to the left. Yamantaka to the right. Left denotes mother tantra, focusing on clear light. Right focuses, right is more on father tantra, illusory body. So in tantric deities, when they tilt left and right, it symbolizes the method that they use, that you will utilize to achieve enlightenment. Both is equal. It's just dependent on what you need. All right? So tilting of the head in iconography is very powerful symbology. Very, very powerful. And if you know what it represents, when you look at that deity, you immediately know the path. You know what they're doing, what's happening, what you're going to be engaged in. You understand very clearly. So iconography is not simply beautiful art is very powerful symbology toward the awakened state of mind, which reminds you, and when you see it, when you see an enlightened being, a statue or a tanka or whatever, it plants imprints in your mind. It's a direct channel to them. Okay? If you're very ill 
and you have your home remedies, that's wonderful. But if you're very ill, it's very good to go to a skilled physician who's practiced, who's studied, who's, who's many years of, um, in that art of finding out, dictating to you what's wrong with you. So similarly, if you go to a lama or a guru whose his whole life has been dedicated towards that, wouldn't it be more efficacious than yourself just picking? So that's an analogy you can use. At the same time, having said that, you can still pick out whoever you like and practice because any Buddha you pick is very effective. Any Buddha. But sometimes, sometimes we need something that counters something within us that we're not aware of. So we need a particular mantra, particular form, particular meditation to counter that faster. Similarly, it's likened to multivitamins where you can take a multivitamin. All Buddhas are like multivitamins. Sometimes we need an extra dosage of C if we have a flu. So let's say that, you know, we can pray to any Buddha, but we're a little slow to learn. Then Tsongkhapa would be fabulous. He would increase our memory. And there's reasons how he increases the memory. It isn't just chanting and he blesses and opens. There are reasons. He opens the memory. He opens your mind. He opens your thought and he makes your mind wider, encompassing, and more accepting. And in that way, he creates a lot of peace in your mind. He gives you wisdom. So if you know all that information to pick, it's wonderful. Because if you pick and you do, it's never wrong. But maybe a year, two years later, you feel, oh, Oh, I think this one's, I didn't know all this information. This is more appropriate. So what do you do? You switch allegiance? See you later, you know, uh, Manjushri, hello, Vajrugini. And then, you know, and then you still don't meet a guru. And then you, then you find out, oh, Chakra Sampa is more exciting. It is very appropriate for me. Bye, Vajrugini, hello. You know, you, you look like a hitchhiker, a Buddha hitchhiker. You know, you get one ride, bye-bye, get another ride, bye-bye, get another. You don't get anywhere. So it's okay. You don't get any disbenefit, none. None at all. Any Buddha will be fabulous if you pray. You still collect merits. You still are able to generate a good mind. You're still able to make an affinity. No problem at all. None. So don't ever have a hang-up about that. We can go to any Dharma store, buy a statue, bring it home, and we can make prostrations, prayers. It's very holy, very wonderful. No problem. And generally good for everyone. No problem at all. It's a multivitamin. Okay? But if we're going to be very serious and systematic in our practice to gain results, then it's very good to refine it. Very good. So what's the best thing? Like finding a disease, it would be very good to go to someone who can define and refine for you. And so you practice that, so you can reach that point, you can do it. Logical, isn't it? 